claw their way back in that final quarter, but in the end, Melbourne was just too good tonight in that first game of Gather Round. Welcome to Crows Live. We're going to be discussing all your questions from the game that just under, un, went underway there at Adelaide yeah. Oval. I'm joined tonight by former Adelaide Ruckman, Sam Jacobs. Sam, what did you think of the game? Yeah, thanks very much, Mon. It's good to be here on uh, on uh, Crows Live TV. Um, well, I guess, first of all, it's, you've got to make mention of the crowd. How good was the crowd? And obviously, <clears throat> we know how special Gather Round is as well. So um, we know the city's alive. We know the, the Crow supporters come out and, and uh, give us a lot of support on the Thursday night game. So fantastic from that point of view. Uh, I think the boys took a step in the right direction. I know, um, you know, unfortunately, we, we just missed out on probably a bit of our conversion and all that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, when the team is down in a little bit of confidence at the moment, we keep adding little bits to our game. Um, and I'm hopefully a four-quarter performance isn't too far away. Definitely. It was definitely a step in the right direction. We can see the boys just coming off the field just there at Adelaide Oval. We'll be heading down into the room shortly and chatting with some of the players, asking them the questions you guys have been sending through on the text line tonight. Um, but as you said, Sam, it's definitely a step in the right direction for them. I think we, they were able to move that ball forward a lot more effectively tonight. Still definitely some mistakes getting it inside 50. I think we saw uh, 54 inside 50s, but only eight marks. But definitely a more higher scoring game that we've seen so far this year. Yeah, it was. And it started with the midfield... Um, um, you know, we, we out-possessed them as well as a team. I think we had something like 50 more possessions than them as well. So um, was there a little bit of overuse with the hands potentially? But, you know, our ability to get the ball in there is, is obviously a step in the right direction. But um, we just need to keep improving our conversion and all that sort of stuff as well. Like you said, we'd, we're getting the ball in there, but we're quite, not quite getting our bang for buck at the moment. But, um, you know, obviously, the, the, you know, every, every game we play, the boys are going to build more confidence and hopefully, uh, hopefully we can put a good performance, four-quarter performance soon, up soon. Absolutely. We've got our first question in from the text line from Michael, who's asked, what improvement did we see from the Crows tonight than what we've seen for the first three rounds? Yeah, good question. I think, I think as we just touched on, was, was the contest stuff and, and our ability to go forward. Um, obviously, that's the start is to, if we can get the ball in there and, and obviously give our forwards more opportunity, it's obviously going to be uh, more chance to create a score. But I think that's, the, that's probably the big one. And we know the strength of Melbourne's midfield. Like we're, we're talking, this is the A++ of the, of the competition. So, you know, Gorn, Viney, Petrarca, all these types Oliver as well so um, I thought the boys did a really good job around stoppage Riley O'Brien competed really well against Max Gorn as well so um, I think they can obviously take a little bit from that um, and the more they give their forwards opportunity obviously the more, more we can uh, benefit from it yeah, you're spot on. We do need to remember which side that they were playing tonight. Yeah, it is yeah. probably going to be a top four side when it comes to September. Um, but what I think was quite exciting to see was them taking those riskier chances heading into the corridor because yeah. they're playing it quite safe the last three rounds. Yeah, it is. And and you know, obviously we saw a different, um, you know, a few different bit of personnel as well. Obviously, Paddy Parnell comes in, Nankervis comes in as well. And it's great to see those guys and led by Dorse as well. We know the, I guess, the outstanding player is and he's the one that, I guess, is the fire starter for us in there with, with our ability to move the ball. And um, I thought Brody Smith as well got a bit more of it tonight as well. You know, both kicking players as well. And that's what I love to see is us being able to take the ball forward. So um, if we can get the ball, I guess, more in the hands of those guys, we're going to be in good shape. Absolutely. And Stephen May did return from that rib injury that he's been uh, picked up last weekend. Were you surprised to see how well he played with uh, that, with that injury? To be honest, no. <laughs> he does this a lot, Stephen May. We, we obviously know he's one of the most courageous players in the competition. And um, unfortunately, with that, he's teamed up with a former teammate of mine, Jake Lever. They're, they're a, pretty good, uh, a pretty good duo down back. But, um, you know, he, he's as tough as they come. You know, he plays a great brand of footy. He, he's obviously a fantastic defender. Um, and obviously, he gets him going on the offensive side as well. But... Um, no, nah, it's to be honest, it's it's no surprise that uh, he's got out there and played the way, way he did. There has been a lot of uh, conversations around the connection between the midfield and the forward line. Found quite often tonight they were bombing the ball straight into Stephen May's hands. Yeah. Is there another approach that they should be looking for? Um, oh, I guess that's the hard thing with Melbourne is is obviously their midfield put a lot of pressure on you to do that, and that's what they want to do. That you know they call it dirty ball or whatever. They want to obviously get it in there nice and high and let let May Lever and these types come off. And, and McDonald obviously played back as well tonight, but. Um, I think we, we created opportunities and, you know, two goals, five to two goals in the first quarter as well. Obviously, that gave us an opportunity, but we didn't quite, once again, it's not quite happening for us just yet. But um, to have seven scoring shots or two in the first quarter, we just got to try and take advantage of that, um, you know, a, a lot earlier in the game and put pressure back on the opposition as a scoreboard pressure is the best. Yeah, absolutely. And we've got a bit of highlights there on the screen for you. What a goal was that yeah. there from Rankin? 
Yeah, it was. Um, obviously, we know we know Rankin, Rochelle, and, and these types up there. And even I thought Fog tonight even created a few opportunities. Like great mark from Dorse there. Um, he obviously kicked a nice goal late as well. But uh, yeah, I think just at times, just our ability to convert when we need probably just wasn't there. And you know, Melbourne have done that two weeks in a row now. As you can see here, like you know, just an opportunist goal from Petrarca. We're even. We're getting back into the game, and it puts us on the back foot, and it gives them a bit of energy. So um, you know, we just need to start taking taking the chances when they're there. What did you think of Dawson's performance tonight? There's been a fair bit of criticism over the last few games that he started a bit slow to the season, but he definitely stepped up tonight. Obviously, he got that fantastic goal in the second half as well. Yeah, we know we know the type of I guess person he is. Number one, and um, you know he's, he's an all Australian play. He's our, he's our captain. He's the guy. You know, the boys turn to when we need someone to stand up. And, you know, the thing I love about Dawson, just listen to him during the week and all that sort of stuff, he's just so composed. And um, I know we're not in a position we want to be in right now from, I guess, a ladder point of view. But the only option we have is to is to fight through it and get our form and confidence back as soon as we can. So um, there's no one better to, to lead us out of that and then Dawson. Absolutely. And how do you think the Demons uh, broke that game open? That's a good question there from Connor from the text line. Well, I thought they just took their opportunities. Um, you know, they, they took, oh, I don't know the contested numbers exactly, but they took a lot more contested marks in our forward line. You're like, you just see when we start to we start to get back into the game, then Van Ruin takes that, that, that contested mark and kicks a goal. You know, they just, um, you know, like before that, that smother from, um, I think it was Sparrow that did that smother and Petrarca takes his, kicks that goal. I think they just, they just, they're a good team. They're a good hardened team. They played a lot of footy together um, and the, you know like I said last week they did the same thing to Port Adelaide and um, they just took the chances when they come and you know statistically we we, we were really good tonight in, in key areas but we just got to be able to convert and put the pressure back on them. Yeah do you think that is where we're falling short at the moment here at Adelaide is it just those couple of drop marks maybe those poor decisions yeah. wrong handles? Yeah and I think it's just a bit of confidence as well like I said when you're when you're at this at this level you're you, you know, there's certain parts of our game that have obviously broken down the last few weeks, but, you know, you're trying to build your game to be a complete game. But tonight we took another step forward in terms of winning the contest inside 50s. But I guess the next one is to, you know, is to convert and actually take our opportunities when they come. Absolutely. And then obviously zero and four now for the season, heading for another difficult game next week against yep. Carlton. Uh, Mary's asking, how do you keep that morale up when you are on a series of losses? Yeah, I think I think who you're playing sort of a bit irrelevant. Like the supporters and, and the players as well. Like you, you got to stick to the process and, and how you want to play. And, um, you know, to be honest, the boys will, be up, boys will be up for the fight. We've got a lot of strong characters and all that sort of stuff as well. So I think, you know, when you're playing against Carlton, it's another good opportunity to then go up against one of the better teams. Um, and, and, you know, if you can get a win like that, which we did only 12 months ago, on this very night, 12 months ago, we got a win and it springboarded our season. So, you know, if we can go up against Carlton and sort of play like we did 12 months ago and take it to them and all that sort of stuff, we know form can change, you know, just with a good, nice goal or a good quarter or something like that. So I've got full confidence in the boys and I'm sure the morale, even though it's disappointing to, to lose again, they'll take bits of confidence from this and keep building on that. Yeah, I think a lot of people were hoping that this may be the night that yeah. sparks the season on from here like it was last year, but maybe Carlton is the, the missing key there, so maybe it'll happen next week. Let's, let's hope so, so anyway. Um, but obviously Adelaide's um, wins on the wins away record hasn't been great over the last 12 months yeah. or so. Um, Take us in a bit, or I guess that, that psyche when you're going to play away. How do you keep that confidence up when you're going into enemy territory? Yeah, like I, the MCG? it's a good question, but I, I don't quite subscribe to the fact. I know we didn't get wins last year, but you know we I think we we're under a goal against Collingwood. We're under a goal against Melbourne. Um, you know we've actually got into really good positions. Like even this year, you know we played Gold Coast up there, and I know we only played pretty much one one and a half quarters of good footy, but. We've gone up there and we've just lost again. So I don't, I don't totally subscribe to the fact that we haven't played good footy because no one got near Collingwood at the MCG last year. No one gets near Melbourne at the MCG. So we've actually shown we can actually play really good footy away. Um, once again, it's just about taking these opportunities because, you know, we're obviously, we know where we've come from. We know where we've been the last few years. The, the, the competition is too hard to think you're just going to be on this, you know, this linear path forward. So... We just need to keep keep sticking together, stay fat, stay tight, stay positive and, and try and take the opportunities when they arise. Definitely. And there's quite a few outs for the Crows this week. Um, and we did have Cook and Nan Curvis come in. Sarah's asking, how do you think they, they played coming back into the side? Yeah, I thought they did well. Um, you know, they've played a lot of SANFL footy probably the last 12 months and obviously this year as well. So, you know, for those boys to come in and, and it's pretty hot in the kitchen, as I mentioned, this isn't just a middle of the road team we're playing. We're playing against, you know, a premiership fancy. So for, the, for those guys to come in, especially probably Nank as well, plays on the wing against, you know, Melbourne have got some really good wingers as well. So it was a good challenge for him. And 
and you know when the intensity rises so much like that um it does take a little while to adjust to i guess the next one for me is i'd love to see some stability with our selection i think you know i look at Lockie Shaw, he's gone in out in out like i'd love to see some consistency and stability through our selection now i don't have the full picture and, and all that sort of stuff and i'm sure there's reasons why they've um, decided to go that way but i'd love to see him stick with these guys you know let him get used to the standard let him get used to the intensity and all that sort of stuff and i'm sure they'll prosper from there absolutely i guess injury has been a factor there we had um, miller uh, and obviously murphy yeah. this week as well um and a huge blows throughout the season to the back line but how do you think that the younger boys down back are, are standing up? They've been doing a pretty good job. Keane had a great game tonight too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, even from, oh, what was the last four or five rounds last year, those boys got exposed to, I guess, playing some and, you know, and unfortunately Muzz went down um, back there. But, you know, Keeney's come in and he's actually been, I'm, I'm really happy with his defensive game, but I thought offensively as well, he's actually getting quite a bit of the ball. He had more than 20 touches tonight as well. So, um, yeah, I, once again, it's uh, those guys, we ju- they just need to keep playing and playing together. And I know Murray's not far away, but, you know, bloke like Butts, he's starting to play a fair bit of footy, needs to keep standing up. So, you know, those guys keep keep embracing the challenges as it gets none harder than you know, sort of Harry Mackay and Charlie Kerno next week. So, um, for me, we just, just need to keep playing them and just keep building that cohesion. And Keaton did play a great game, but obviously did get a bit wordy with the umpire yeah. at one point. What did you think of that? He got in a bit of trouble. Yeah, he got to, got to uh, close his mouth, unfortunately. They're, they're Kenny, but I don't know if anyone can understand him anyway with his uh, Irish accent, but... Um, yeah, I thought I thought the other one as well is, is Josh Worrell's obviously come in and you know his development's probably been fast tracked by the exit of uh, Tommy Duda and um, but once again he, he's looked looked likely but he just needs to, he just needs to play AFL footy he needs to just keep stringing games together and, and get that uh, development into him. And the defense was definitely the focus during the preseason for the Crows. Such a fantastic year attacking wise last year. But do you think there's maybe been a switch too far in the opposite direction? Are we playing a little bit too defensively now and do we need to reset a little bit? Oh, once again, I think there's just there's probably a few reasons why um, you know our, our offense offense is probably broken down. I think the biggest one is the fact we, we were number one last year. Mm-hmm. You can't be number one in the league and think teams are just going to let you do what you did last year. Like you know we're starting to you know creep creep up in the right direction and teams are going to put more time into us. They're going to see who's setting us up. You know why are we doing it? Why are we why are we so good offensively? So um, there is an adjustment period with that. Unfortunately, we're going through it now and it's it's having an effect on our win loss record. Um, but we, we need to we need to get I guess that defensive side of the game in place if our offense is going to take a little bit time to get going but um, I know Nixie tried to free the boys up tonight and you saw you certainly saw signs once again um, and, and the more we can get it in there as I've, I've mentioned a couple of times the more chance we are to, to put school board pressure back onto the opposition. Mm-hmm. How do you think some of the bigger boys are going? Tex and Fogarty, well Tex especially had a bit of a quiet first yeah. half, he got going in the second. How do you think Fogarty's tracking to be I guess the replacement for Tex when he does choose to step down? Yeah I think Tex, uh, last week to be honest I thought he probably looked a little bit you know not not sore but it just looked like it was his first game after a back injury you know back injuries are obviously very hard but um yeah fog fog's working into it you know the challenge people forget how young fog is and and how hard it is playing key forward like it's it's the hardest position to come in and impact um and when you're playing with it in a you know unfortunately right now we're not playing the form we like but you know for fog to come in and think fog's going to have a fantastic game when you know our offense is breaking down it's very hard for a, a player of his age and to be able to do that but if we talk about opportunity and us needing to take our opportunity, he's a guy that can do that. You know, he knocks that goal over from 55 at the T-junction. Um, you know, things like that. Unfortunately, against Geelong a couple of weeks ago, he missed that one in the goal square. But, you know, moments like that, that's what builds the confidence. That's what builds the excitement through the group. So for Fogg, he's just got to keep, obviously, working alongside Tex and that cohesion will, will continue to prosper. And then when that time does come, you know, I've got full confidence that he can take over from Tex. Do you think that he's almost in his head a little bit? I'm just wondering, I think he was setting up for a goal just outside 50 in the second quarter and you could see that his eyes were dying yeah. immediately and then he tried to play on and ultimately it didn't make it through the yeah it, yeah it is and I, I remember fog when he came in um to the afl system you know he's such a pure pure jumper at the ball played on instinct and all that sort of stuff now i don't think you know you can't play that way throughout your whole career because there's obviously pressure and all that that comes with that but um you know he like i said he's, he's tracking well and and do, would we love him to be you know having five shots on goal and 15 or 20 touches absolutely but is it realistic right now and where he's at in his career it's not but um, you know he needs to keep working keep finding ways to impact the game when it's not going his way absolutely we've got another question here from Liam how far away do you think we are from getting to where we need to be Oh, I think I think in footy terms you never you never finish product, but um, I think last year the, the the standard was set in terms of and you know I know Tim and the club have come out and said openly that you know we, we want to play finals this year and um, you know we're we're confident we've got the group to be able to do that. Um, so you know I, I think 
I think in footy, I think it's very dangerous to, you know, for me to sit here and go, oh, you know, we need to be X here, we need to be here. Right now is we need to be better next week because right now, even though we put a, a, a game together where there's positive signs, we still didn't get the win. So it's a wins-loss industry and we need to get some wins and hopefully that starts next week. And then obviously, you know, as soon as we can start getting that school at uh, that ladder ledger back in our favour, that's when we can start getting to where we need to be. And one question that we are hearing repeatedly on the text line is, you know, how do we have this four and zero start uh, or zero and four start after so much, uh, I guess, excitement during yeah. the preseason of potentially making finals this year? Do you think that expectation has almost led to a bit of complacency where uh, the Crows caught, I guess, on the back foot heading into the season? No, no, I don't think it's complacency. I think it's, I think the competition's that even. Like we look at, you know, you got your top couple of teams, you know, your Melbournes, your Collingwood aren't there right now, but the Giants, uh, Brisbane, once again, they're not there right now, but they've been very good for six years. Um, you know, they're obviously the, the top teams and they've been able to do that. But after that, any teams from sort of four to 14th almost, they're just swapping places. And that's because it's so hard to take that next leap to be able to get into the finals. And then it's even harder to get to the top four again. So I think it's more of a, a fact of, you know, we showed some really good signs last year. We played some really strong footy, but, you know, teams are actually just putting more time into us now. You know, they're, they're asking more questions of us, you know, um, you know, Tex has an, an, out, uh, an amazing year last year. Can he replicate that? Mm -hmm. You know, Dorse, once again, he, he popped last year and played in the midfield. Where it's like, we haven't really seen that. Whereas now teams have had a whole off season to go, all right, what are Adelaide actually doing? And when we play against him, how can we counter it? So I think it's just part of when you do improve that, um, you know, teams just put more time into you and it obviously makes it harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely that safety blanket of, uh, I guess, the rebuild stage. Yeah, that's right. Gone, that's, that's right. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, let's have a quick chat, I guess, about Rankin. We talked about a bit about him previously, but it was a fantastic game from him. But how can we get him with the ball in his hands more often of the time because he's so electric when he does have it. He's either setting goals up or kicking yeah. it himself. Yeah, I think with, with Isaac, obviously we've, we've seen him come up the ground a little bit more and spend a little bit more time in the centre square. But, you know, he's, he's obviously so dangerous up forward. And, and once again, it's, it's not giving the forwards an out, but sometimes you, you are guided by what's happening further up the ground. And, you know, tonight, probably not so much tonight, but the last three weeks, we haven't been getting the ball in there as much as we like and, and all that sort of stuff, which makes his job harder again. So... Um, you know, I think he, he's another one where everyone just expects so much of him. Like, it's not realistic that he's going to have 20 and have four shots on goal every game. He's, but he's, he's in that basket of, you know, when the opportunity comes, we need him to kick those goals. You know, when Joshua Shelley gets those opportunities, we need him to kick those goals because that's, that's what their job is down there and that's what we need from them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the boys obviously down at the, in the rooms at the moment having their team meeting with Nixie. What do you think the message would be for them tonight from Nixie? Well, I think it would be, be very much that is, you know, we can't expect to, to come in here and just think we're going to put a four-quarter performance together off the bat. I think we'll take positives from that. We'll look at it, we'll review and go, all right, these are the areas that we've, we've done well in. You know, we've won the contest. We've won the possession count. We've won the inside 50s. Right, the next thing is, let, the next add-on, the next layer of the game is, all right, how can we turn those inside 50s into goals and scores and scoreboard pressure? Mm -hmm. And zero and four, a lot of people keep bringing up the, the stat of how yeah. unlikely it yeah. is to make it to finals now. But do you think there's still a chance they can turn the season around? Oh, of course there is. You know, it, history suggests it's going to be hard. We know that. Mm -hmm. But to me right now, which where we're at is like that's, you know, park that. If, if we're focusing on the win-loss now, that we're, we're setting our, we're putting our energy into the wrong thing. So right now it should be sticking to the process, sticking to what we, you know, the way we want to play and the way we want to continue to build our season. Uh, and then the wins will come and then, you know, we'll let, we'll let the outside external people worry about the ladder and, and uh, work all that sort of stuff out. But we're up to, what is it, round five. Mm -hmm. You know, we just need to pump the brakes a little bit. We know, like I said, that's not ignoring the fact we're zero and four. We know we need to get better. We know we need wins sooner rather than later. But right now we need to, you know, put a four quarter performance together and get that first win. Of course, you are right, it is early into the season. Yeah. We are getting ahead of ourselves. But how do you shut out all that noise that is happening outside the club? I think, oh, and, and obviously playing footy in this town for a long time is, is I think you've got to embrace that people care. You know, I've played footy in, in states where, you know, it, footy's an afterthought. So the best thing about playing in Adelaide is that we play in front of packed stadiums. Um, you know, it's the talk of the town. People actually generally care around how the Crows are going. So for me, it was always embracing that responsibility. You know, I had a responsibility as, you know, the, the, the Ruckman to, you know, put a good performance up and start the midfield. 
right now this group just has to embrace the opportunity we have to um you know start playing well and um you know feed off the energy that the supporters give us and all that sort of stuff so yeah for me i, I just think you need to embrace you know whatever happens externally because if you're trying to block it out it's just unrealistic and you're probably just wasting energy so for me it's about just embracing it put your head down and go to work yeah, the SA clubs are definitely the talk of the town this week. Yeah. The gather round. How do you feel about the gather round concept? Are you loving it? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I'm a, uh, as big a footy head as anyone, and, and obviously I'm in the SA NFL system now. But you know, even that, you know, we get so many opportunities to to learn from you know AFL coaches, AFL administrators that are coming into the town this weekend. So um, yeah, I, I know there's talk of you know potentially other states trying to get it, but I, I just don't see it being anywhere else. I just think it's such a positive thing, and um, you know. Here in Adelaide, we'll, we'll watch a game of marbles at Adelaide Oval if that's what's on. We'll still pack stadiums out. So um, we love it. And obviously, there's so many great things happening around the city as well. So, um, no, I think it's really positive. And it's, yeah, I think it's really good. Do you think SA should keep it? And a lot of oh, 100%. States want it? 100%. Uh, obviously, Mally is a port man, but make sure we keep it in the state. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, team meetings have finally finished up down the room. So we're going to head down to Riley O'Brien. So, Rob, a lot of fans are obviously pretty frustrated. Is the playing group feeling that frustration? Absolutely, yeah. Not the way we want to start the year and uh, we've played a lot better footy tonight than we have the last few weeks. Back to sort of our footy, but we like to be the polish and feel those fundamentals cost us in the end. So, uh, disappointing result, but gave ourselves a chance and just sort of cost ourselves with the basic stuff. Obviously, um, we're getting a lot of questions from fans about ball movement. Is that something that was a focus um, in your post-game chat? Yeah, it was. Yeah, probably our, just our fundamental execution. We just made too many errors with the ball. Uh, I think... Oh yeah, overall it's, it's coming down to that. We're just missing too many easy ones and it's hurting us going the other way. So probably got, you know, we need to get back to work and just uh, work on that stuff and get it going again. What are the main areas do you think have been letting the team down in the first couple of weeks? Uh, that's a good question. We uh, had a big emphasis tonight on getting back, back, back to our system and back to our shape on the ground and we did that pretty well. It was just, it was just probably yeah, that fundamental stuff again. Uh, some ground ball takes, some kicking execution some decision-making stuff that probably hurt us. And, uh, yeah, Melbourne are a pretty good team and they punish you. So, uh, yeah, disappointing to, you know, get the loss. But uh, I think we had a step in the right direction tonight and uh, we're just going to keep building on that. And um, where do you think you've uh, turned it around in that last quarter? Say again? Where do you think you turned it around in that last quarter? Uh, I think we just brought, brought it to the contest uh, quite well in that last quarter. Uh, went pretty quick with the ball. Um, Gave ourselves a few chances and probably cost ourselves a couple of them, but uh, definitely gave ourselves a chance in the game and we weren't quite able to execute because there was obviously a big margin to come back from. So we gave ourselves a chance, but uh, they were a good team, so didn't, they weren't able to execute. And a lot of fans are asking, I guess, what was the message at three-quarter time to kind of spur on that comeback? Uh, good question. Um, it, it wasn't really to do anything different. It was sort of just to you know, take it on a bit more because obviously we were down, so take a bit more risk with the ball and, and just and just go for it. So um, we knew they'd, they'd tire late uh, coming off a shorter break and um, we just wanted to put the foot down and, and test them out. So basically take a little bit more risk and, and go for it. So we, we try to do that. We're getting a lot of questions from fans. Why aren't we kicking more goals? Good question. Uh, probably just our ball movement up, up the field and then probably our polish and execution going inside 50. Uh, not Probably not just executing that final play, going inside 50 and not um, getting the score on the board as a result. So uh, it's certainly been a strength of ours probably last year and we're just not quite clicking in that forward end of the ground. So we'd love to kick a few more goals and um, get that potency forward to centre. Uh, we've got a lot of people asking, I guess, where to from here. What's the focus uh, for next week? Um, how quickly do you kind of turn your focus to next week as well? Yeah, I mean, just keep building on what we did tonight. I think we got uh, a lot better than what we did last week tonight and we um, played some pretty decent footy uh, so keep building on that keep building on our, on our system playing our system and then just working on our fundamentals during the week so our, our kicking our marking our ground ball take some of that stuff for certain, a lot of guys uh, is not quite at the level at the moment that's hurting us so do a lot of work during the week and get back to it and um, obviously you said mentioned you know the playing group's obviously quite frustrated um, but what is the overall feeling amongst the playing group after this one yeah, frustration, definitely. We're uh, really disappointed with our start. We were really optimistic coming into the year and we still are optimistic, but uh, it's just a matter of putting our head down, going to work, um, staying connected as a group, um, staying really positive and uh, turning it around, uh, which I know we will.
O'Brien there. And, uh, he had a very difficult task tonight yeah. against Max Gorn, that's for sure. But he did mention there that the message at halftime was to start taking more risks. Do you think we saw that in the second half? Yeah, we did. And, um, you know, I, I guess it's an easy thing to say is like, let's just take more risks. But, you know, we have to build the confidence to be able to do that. But I think, you know, Nixie and the club have been really open and transparent with the areas we want to improve on. And um, obviously, Riley, once again, they're happy to put it out there that, that we want to get better with the offensive side of the game. So, um, you know, once again, we just need to keep working on it and keep improving on it and keep training it. And team meeting did run overtime tonight. So it's about all we have time for this evening on Crows Live. Sam, thanks for joining us. No worries. Thank you very much. That's all right. And uh, thanks for you guys for joining us as well. Don't forget that you can send in all of your questions that you want us to discuss and ask the players at every home game through our, our text line. And if you want some more Crows content this weekend, you can, of course, tune in to uh, the Crow Show on Sunday. Good night. Were you there to say the sweat? Were you there to hear the rice? Were you there to taste the victory? Were you there to feel the pride? Together, we're stronger. Be there in 2024.